Hey everyone, welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Old Man Vin, joined every week by Joe Bryant. We're just talking in the pre-show <laughs> about pressing big red buttons, total recalls, and most importantly, Highlander movies. You go back and <laughs> yes. listen to the live and uncut, if you get a chance, I'll put that in podcast format for our beautiful party patrons. What is going on with you, Jill Brent? We got a lot to talk about this week, but uh, any, anything fun going on uh, interesting? Aww. Well, we had fun again on our Trackmania stream yesterday. We got to navigate our cars on some quirky and fun new map. So that, that was cool. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing some practice runs with a few of them, especially, I think there was one I didn't make it through, but I will get through it. <laughs> yeah, we had the um, Halloween map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. <laughs> which, uh, which was kind of entertaining. Go back and check that out. Uh, if you want to participate in that, uh, you can. We got a I guess it's like a private track media server where we, basically it's open to anybody if you're a Twitch sub or patron, like hop in our Discord, get the launch codes. And we do um, 10 to 14 new tracks each week, and we do it on Tuesday. We test out the tracks, maybe swap a couple out. And on Friday, we come back and try to do a little rounds of points match. It's, it's a good time. Yeah. It's a good time. <laughs> Old game. Runs on anything. And uh, that's that, man. I've been, uh, I was trying to be adult-ish yesterday. <laughs> Doing a little of that. I, I occasionally have periods where I go through attempting to like set things up. Um, I've been meaning to recap the power supply in one of my audio interfaces, one of my fancier ones, uh, an 828 MK3. Mm. I've been meaning to do it. And it, it's been, it's just a thing that happens to this particular audio interface. I'm like, all right, fine. And I just put it in the rack. And I, like, this is seven months ago. I'll get around to it. <laughs> finally got around to it like last week i, I tracked down is like what are the values to all the caps somebody did the work for me i just had to go over the digi key and like punch everything in get all the thing oh, got nice. the order and i'm like oh everything's going to arrive today you know what let me go get the interface take it apart and like be ready so i can just pop out the psu you know desolder and resolder all right and to do it <laughs> pull it apart pop off the lid and there's this cheater cap between the power supply and the motherboard on the interface where somebody's like, oopsie. And they did a, you know, basically a bodge wire about with a capacitor. And it's, it's the puffy cap. None of the, none of the capacitors in the power supply are, no, no admittedly, power supply, you know, capacitors can go bad without being puffy. But this one was obviously, and I'm like, 100% chance that's the only problem with this. 100% chance this is going to be like, boop, boop, boop. 100% chance I do not have this capacitor because oh, it's boy. not one that I ordered. And that's a dangerous time for anything in my house that I'm not using that has capacitors in it. I'm like, hmm, what can I go digging around? Now? I went into the parts room and I'm like looking at stuff that's kind of open and I'm like, do I, do I want to share that? I couldn't find one. So I've had to order that particular. That's how things work out in my life. But yeah. I'll have a, now I have this decision. So when the rest, when that one thing comes in, because I'm not going to recap the entire thing if I don't have to. I'm not. Why? Because I'm lazy. I, I'm waiting for that one cap and I'm going to swap it out, but I'll have that as a backup. That was, that was, that's what I get for trying to be proactive, but at least it gets fixed. It'll be back in service. All right, everybody, yeah. let's go ahead and jump into this. We've been uh, talking about Mozilla, especially Mozilla doing stuff last week that nobody was happy with. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. It was kind absolutely. of a surprising. That I didn't mm -hmm. even see, I was expecting at least one person to go, hey man, it's not that bad, but nobody, nobody did that. They're like, no, yeah. that's pretty bad. Yeah. So yeah, two weeks ago, we actually talked about Firefox doing search data collection that me and Ven were not fans of, but now we have a Mozilla Firefox focusing on what they do best on the web browser experience and using the web browser. Woohoo! <laughs> that's, that's the best thing possible, Mozilla. So Mozilla released their future roadmap for the coming year of our favorite open source web browser, Firefox. And my favorite line that John, the community manager, wrote in the Mozilla roadmap blog says, continuous work on speed, performance, and compatibility. And John also says, more streamlined menus that reduce visual clutter 
and prioritize top user actions so you can get to the, the important things quicker. That's awesome. <laughs> That's absolutely what, what we want. We want that, that focus on the web browser experience. And there actually will be a lot of new features. This is interesting, like tab grouping and vertical tabs for greater productivity. And one of my favorites, a sidebar for organizing tabs. That, that's going to be, that's, that's actually really cool. I think something I will find very useful. And also a new profile management system for keeping things organized. New tab wallpapers. So when you create a new tab, there'll be a new wallpaper. And privacy settings made easier to use. And with a little bit of uh, futzing around with the menu and making, making things just uh, more visible and easier to find. And some of these features you will be able to test in the current Firefox Nightlies or can be turned on in the About Configs. So good on you, Firefox. I was really happy by this roadmap. <laughs> You had a really, really good one about six months ago, too. So this, this continues that focus on the web browser. It's definitely something they can pop up with. Um, you know, you need a little bit of a win after you tell everybody like, hey, man, we're going to be collecting all your data bits. Uh, I know. And yeah. by the way, it is uh, going to be opt out. We're going to go ahead and opt you into it. Yeah, and nobody's a big fan of that. But they do definitely most certainly talk about intuitive privacy settings. And I'm like, yeah, you, you know what would be really handy, Mozilla? Because, you know, they're talking about world-class anti-tracking technologies and a simplified, how about you do one for the browser? How about you do one for the browser? That'd be really slick and just make it an off button. Just one button that just says off. Quit tracking anything from me, Mozilla. You. I'll worry about everybody else too, but from you in the browser. I don't need to go to about config to change anything. I don't need to go into the privacy settings and multiple ticks, just an off button. Do that. Do that. And I'll be very, very pleased. Now, that said, more of this. Stick to this. This is your core component, despite what everybody wants to believe. Let's pretend the last 10 years has been a fever dream. And you want to focus on the Mozilla browser. Why? Because that's the most important thing Mozilla has right now. And they need to regain browser market share. It's pathetic. It's small. It's insignificant. People are more and more and more as days go by, going, why am I even bother with Mozilla? Like, you know, you, 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 you're up against things like Edge. And, you know, I think Edge is way above Mozilla, but like Brave and Vivaldi, like these spinoff Chromium things. And we don't want yeah. Firefox to go away. So yeah. more of this in credit or credits do. More of these development blogs, less about, hey, we're putting AI in the browser. Like, stop. Open source Android keyboards. When Gboard first, what what did you what was the first keyboard you started out with, Joe? Like the first I've been one? using honestly Gboard ever since it came out. <laughs> just just the default mode. Sometimes I would you know download mods and everything, but I always went back to Gboard because it was less bloated and. Well, Gboard's a no relatively ads. new keyboard. Um, yeah, I guess it is. It seems old now, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, and like I remember when Gboard first came out, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. Way, way back in the day, um, one of the first innovations, and it first showed up on iDevices, and I'm like, this, this is brilliant, was Glide. Mm, oh, yeah. You no, know, yeah. the first uh, app time I've ever saw that in public was uh, a keyboard called Swipe. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. ooh, I was so happy. I was waiting <laughs> for that to come to Android. I was sitting there, I was like, give me that, because like, I knew how efficient I could be with it. And as Joe mentioned, it was in Gboard. It's in yeah. Gboard. You know, Gboard <laughs> works. It's great uh, for what it is, but it's also a resource hog. It's sluggish. It it's sluggish. Yeah. It doesn't matter if uh, your Android device has four gigs of RAM and octo core. I think mine's got six, but it's definitely got an octo core uh, SOC in it. And I've always been on the lookout for, you know, a good open source or closed source, but I'd always prefer open source if I can get it just because I know, you know, when they say we're not collecting any data bits, that it can be verified by somebody smarter than me. I'm always a fan of looking for open source for that. And the problem with most of the open source uh, keyboards is none of them know how to swipe. They don't. They're 
reasonably lightweight and you can, you know, do the tippy taps and all that. Mm -mm. I, I can't operate like that because I typically use a tablet and portrait mode when I'm out and about. And like tippy tap typing doesn't work like that. So I need that glide swipe. Yeah, and that works. It works really well on tablets. <laughs> so this is going to bring me to Helibor, customizable open source keyboard. I'm going somewhere with this. Stay with me. It's got basically everything I want. It's based on AOSP, which you might know, you know, if you've installed uh, alternate ROMs, like, uh, you know, I have a CR droid running on my daily driver right now. 100% offline keyboard. No, you don't have to worry about your data bits getting tracked. It's got spiel check. It's got custom themes, layouts, and it even knows how to learn words. And it's not terribly fugly. Uh, Jill was like, hey, go to the F -Droid thing. Because you know what? I went to the GitHub page and I'm like, welcome to the GitHub page about a thing with a, that is nothing but a GUI application and you don't have screenshots on it. Yep, I'm never not going to give people static about it. So back over there. Doesn't look bad at all. Uh, you know, it's me. So my theme is just like, just make everything black, get rid of any of the um, pictures and anything to that effect. But um, if you do want that one missing feature, because out of the box, out of the box, it does not work with glide typing. I'm like, well, why is that? Doesn't make sense. Why, why would you tell me about a feature that maybe you could have, but you don't include it? Because there's not an open source library for swipe or glide, apparently, even according to them. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. That's the reason it's not built into it. I thought it was like a technical, and maybe it is a technical issue. So what you have to do is uh, get a hold to swipe libs. Now you can manually extract that from G apps, but on their GitHub page, there's a direct download mm -hmm. link to get a piece downloaded and drop it in a folder, tell the keyboard like, hey, this is where this library is. Use it, boom, and it just starts working. It's crazy lightweight, and um, I've been using it for about a week, daily driver. It's just so nice not to have, um, you know, just a chuggy yeah, keyboard on a modern, you know, I got a Galaxy yeah. S6, kids. You know, I it's know. not new. It's a couple of years old, but like it, it stompinates everything, which always boggles me when I hit the keyboard and it's like, plunk, plunk, and it pops up. So even if I'm primarily concerned about speed, but also if, if you don't want the data hoovering on top of everything else, uh, you want to get rid of G uh, board or whatever. If you got recommendations, let me know if you know, like, hey, then how did you miss insert keyboard here? <laughs> yeah. That has uh, all the, you know, the one feature I want, it's got to have good glide typing. Okay. Yeah. Like, it has to have that. If it doesn't have that, I don't care about it. But if you know one, type in the name, put in the video um, in the comments section. And, like, I'll go take a look at it. Guaranteed. Uh, Jill yeah. predictably looked at it and went, <laughs> Let's focus on the important bits of a keyboard, yes, though. Yeah, so, you know, I had seen the the Helioboard uh, keyboard on F-Droid and, and had wanted to give it a try. So thank you, Vin, for putting this in the show notes. It, it made me remember to do that. And it, it actually has a nice emoji search feature, which I require from any Android keyboard, and clipboard history, which is essential for me to do my social media posts each day for the shows. So, <laughs> so those are kind of two important things for me. <laughs> May not be for Vin, but they were for me. Go check it out if you've been looking for a very snappy keyboard, and especially if you've got like an older device. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. it's open source. Yay. Right. <laughs> so, you know, when they say, hey, we, it's completely on device, we don't do any tracking, like you can verify that yourself. And it's completely opposite. To uh, what our friends over in Redmond are up to. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely, Vin. So the tech community has been all abuzz about the latest announcement by Microsoft. Microsoft announced their Copilot Plus PC, which is a computer designed to run AI tools. The article states, the first of these new Copilot Plus devices will arrive in the form of the Microsoft Surface Pro 11, and Surface Laptop 7, each making use of powerful neural processing units, NPU, housed inside Qualcomm's Snapdragon X chipsets. And that's really cool and wonderful, but it is not this announcement of the new Microsoft AI computers that has the tech community <laughs> rolling their eyes, even though, yes, they are very sweet hardware devices, 
but it is the AI software that is running locally on these machines, which includes a feature called Windows Recall, which is explained really good, really well in this quote from a laptopmag.com post. It's the ability to run on-device tools as often as needed that allows Windows Recall to work as it does. Building a log of every action you perform through a constant stream of screenshots that can be recalled through user <laughs> searches. Uh, honestly, this is essentially spyware. <laughs> and, you know, a security and privacy nightmare that can be easily manipulated. But Microsoft says that recall won't be seen by cloud services, but will only be locally stored. And I honestly have my doubts because, you know, they're a, they're a data collection machine, an ad collecting machine, just, just like Google and other companies. And, you know, Microsoft, you know, is, it says it's going to be on by default and you have to opt out of it which a lot of Windows users don't have the know-how to do. <laughs> it's just, this is a nightmare. So once again, the best operating system for the Copilot plus PC will be Linux. <laughs> God. <laughs> the average person doesn't care, though. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't care. They'll never look at it, never bother them. They'll just shrug. They're like, this, this, is, this is bubble talk, you know. But Microsoft, I'm not I'm worried about this because, like, clearly, Clearly, all of this only kicks in and starts doing all the crazy new features that are potentially dangerous. You know, there are valid concerns here. It's not all panic at the disco, but it only does this after I've consented, after I've opt in. Right, Microsoft? Right, guys? No? Okay. Well, I guess that might be. But does it really matter? Um, even if you do say no, how many times? I want you to think about this. How many times have you told Microsoft? How many times have you told Google? No. You don't even get an option for no these days, do you? Uh-uh. It's like maybe later. Clearly the thing that you're trying to push into my face that you need me to do, the, the goal, you know, that little pop-up is to wear you down, right? My latest example is Google search. We'd like to know your location. Yes. Maybe later. But never. Like, I have location disabled on all my devices. Telemetry's gone, man. So. Even if you do have that option to cut it off, they'll, you'll probably constantly get an option of like, hey, we like, you know, Clippy's going to show up, the 2024 version of Clippy. AI, so yeah, Windows 11, welcome to the brave new world. AI telemetry forced online accounts, full recording, and Microsoft owning an ad business. That's, that's an interesting mix that you got right there. You know, that's not me hitting on Microsoft. That's just telling you what you have to deal with in current year right now. This is just more on top of it. Hand wave it away. Don't worry about it. Uh, plain and simple. Like if you're tied into this, you're tied into this. This is a life you want to live. Maybe you see the benefit from it. And you're like, no, this is awesome. I don't see the repercussions from it. That's cool. You rock and roll. Now, if you're on enterprise, you know, if you if you're important to Microsoft, they will give the admins an option to disable some of this. Uh, you can do that in the turn off saving snapshots for Windows because that's going to be the big killer. This is a wild time. This yes. is, uh, we look at this and it's like, well, it's a bit strange. You know, should you install Linux? You know, personally, I, I don't care if you install Linux or not. I don't. I, I'm so far beyond that phase. Linux is an operating system. It's a tool. Trust me. I look at like the weird culty Linux people, the same as like the Windows users do. I'm like, it's an operating system, man. Come on. Like, I, should you switch to Linux? My analogy is like, you, you got to think of Linux for what it is, man. Like you get like a little toy model rocket, you know, like the kind you pump up and it goes and it just kind of falls over a little bit. That's Windows. Linux is a big honking enterprise Saturn V rocket with it shoots up into the sky. It's got a bazillion buttons and switches and on that. And if you look at that big Saturn V rocket and go, oh, nope, I'm going to stick to my little bottle rocket. Then no, Linux isn't for you. If you look at that and you go, so many buttons to press, man, let's go. Maybe give Linux a try. You know, yeah. it, it is not. Don't listen to anybody who's like, no, just install it. You'll figure it out. You won't. Those people do more damage to Linux than anything I've ever said in the history of ever. You know, I, again, I'm violently against like Linux cheerleaders. They're like, rah, rah, everything's perfect on Linux. It's not. Everything's not perfect on Windows. Everything's not perfect on Mac OS. 
Don't try to pretend it's perfect on Linux either. You're not doing anybody a favor. Anything you're doing is scaring away new potential users, people. So you're done with that uh, Linux life? <laughs> That's cool. You want to live on Microsoft? That's cool. Wherever you need to be, you go there. But hey, man, uh, if you need help with that, on Linux, there's plenty of documentation, plenty of places to go play. Pretty much everything works, including your gaming. There's like four games yeah. <laughs> that don't work these days. That's about all you get. And, and you're going to bring up, you know, somebody's going to bring up like the Adobe products. You don't use those Adobe products. Quit bringing that up in a conversation. You know, if you're using that as your crutch, how about this? You don't want to run Linux. That's also a valid thing. They're like, not my thing. Cool. We can still hang out and be friends. Yeah. All right. But Microsoft is always, at the end of the day, going to Microsoft. So. Yeah, they are. Let's quit mm -hmm. talking about ARM. ARM's not the future. No, uh-uh. <laughs> risk is the future, according to the internet. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know if you listen to the possibly. internet. They're like, ah, possibly. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> we got to dig the paradigm, people. Um, this post comes from the Canonical blog where they are talking about the Milky Five, the $48 perpetually out of stock piece of SBC goodness, uh, which has always been an interesting uh, option. And now it's got a new operating system that you can run on it from Canonical, Ubuntu 20.04.04 server. Now, this is not a complete shot. Canonical's been releasing RISC-V images since 2021. Yeah. Now, server might be the sticking point for you. It definitely might be, uh, but the reason for that is none of the GPU bits work. Not even a little bit. They're virtually non-existent. So don't go looking for a desktop release anytime soon. And a couple of important notes with this one. PCI Express support kind of works with the NVMe, and uh, but the drivers for the Wi-Fi, they sort of work, but no love for the external GPUs. I don't know why you'd expect that to work, but you know, just save you the time from plugging that in and trying to do it. And one of the weird quirks with kernel 6.8 is USB 3 works, but the USB 2 ports, not so much. <laughs> that could be a problem, but I love seeing things like this. Why? Because the Milky 5 is the type of ARM device that I enjoy. It's to the roots. It's how it started out. A low cost, reasonably powered SOC single board computer for 48 bucks. That reminds you of something yeah. way back in the day. We used to call them Raspberry <laughs> Pis. Remember those? When they yes. were 40, 50 bucks, <laughs> and you could just pick one up, even if you were struggling, you're like, I can at least give me a little development board and play with. And that's refreshing to see when like your basic options right now start at like 75, 80 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's a whole different world. Yeah. It's Good to so see. great to see Risk Five coming down in price. You remember, Vin, when I started here on LWW and we just started talking about Risk Five, and they were thousands of dollars for some of these boards. <laughs> that, this this is amazing, and I I think that this collaboration with Canonical and Milk V Technology will really help accelerate Linux adoption and development on Risk Five systems, and really get us you know one step closer to having Linux fully working and the flagship OS on this fast and powerful efficient isa <laughs> it's awesome yeah we we're we're looking for i i am actually looking for a risk five future <laughs> i'm i'm hoping <laughs> i know arm you know it, it 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 seems to be all the trend right now but arm works it's not the arm trend works. It, it works yeah that, uh, <laughs> if, if the trend is i need something that works yes these are tinker boards. These are something to play with. Learn the architecture. Go pick it up. Good on Canonical. Like I said, Canonical, you do something dumb, I'm going to give you a hard time for it. You do something good, I'm going to praise you for it. I know that's weird to do, but like I said, I'm not a cheerleader. So <laughs> I need to thank some people this week. Um, all Linux users. <laughs> last night, Nubbin, who's one of our beautiful patrons, is also a Twitch subscriber. And yeah. he rolled over to four years as a Twitch okay. sub. So I wanted to give him a shout out for that. And also right before the show, Dubsy Gugga yeah. did a 20 Thank month, you, 21 month resub. Yeah. And if you want to come uh, join the crew, you can do that over at Twitch. That, you know, you don't get any ads, but you also get access to our Discord server. But we'd love it. And if you kick us a buck a week, 20 bucks a week, $1,000 a week, over at Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. All of this information is in the support tab over at linuxgamecast.com. We got a website. How old school is that? How retro is that? And there's no ads or tracking or anything in any of the sites I do. 
But speaking of patron, if you do that, I'm going to put something out for you tomorrow. I am. I've been working on the elite yeah. desk, Yay. the little tiny elite desk. I've been putting that together. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I found some things out. More importantly, I found the right person to get them from. What do you need to replace? What do you need to upgrade? How do you get Linux on it? How do you make it the best experience possible? Already sorted that. Old man Vin's taking care of that. So you're going to get early crack at that. I'm going to go ahead and upload that for our patrons. Let's take a look at it. Go over it. More importantly, like go ahead and grab one, at least from somebody, the, the same person I got mine from. So you don't have to worry about like, ooh, should I get one on eBay? I'll, I'll give you a good link from a real company. That'll ship it for about 120 bucks. Or if you're, you're just curious, I did the benchmarks. Trust me, I torture tested. I, that poor little thing. I'm like, I'm going to make you scream. And I did. So take a look at that tomorrow. It'll be a probably, you know, sometime before tomorrow ends. How about that? I'm worse than the cable company when I get a chance to get that up. But uh, you get live and uncut versions of this show as well in podcast format, video format. And it's just a gang of little thank yous. If you can help us out doing what we do. What else we got? Libra Pay, PayPal, Bitcoin, Amazon Wishlist. Jordan's got one from Saturday's Linux Gamecast. Jill's got one. Pedro's got one, and I got one for the studio as a reminder. No, as a warning, I will publicly shame you back here on our fine up Sandy Cannibal's wool if you get anything for the studio. And like, that's on you, buddy. Um, unless you send me a note, because you can send us a note and we'll read it out. And we're like, ah, like my studio thing's just stuff for the studio. Jill's got one. It's filled with like blinky RGP stuff. Just go creep on it. Maybe you'll feel generous. Who knows? A merch store. You know, you see a little sticker back here? Like, ooh, we got stickers. I don't have that poster. I did. If I ever want to make some money, I'll publicly put up that poster because I've had so many people ask me about that poster. And uh, I still have the Axia file where I made it. Oh, so maybe one day. And of course, a humble affiliate. Now, why do we read all this stuff off? Why? Because we're not trying to sell you anything. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you like what we do, you want to help it out, small independent media, go for it. But I'm not going to give you a mattress ad and I'm not going to collect your data. Why go go download the um <laughs> podcast for this? See where it's yeah. uh coming from. It's coming from my wallet, kids. I don't do any tracking. It's not hosted on Spotify or like Blurberry or whatever, whoever's data mining your stuff. Uh uh. It's just up on the cloud that I pay for. Because we love you like that. All right. Let's get out of here, Joe Bryant. Fun okay. show. Yeah. Time to put on the music <laughs> and roll them credits. <laughs> Aww. Steve Husband said he learned a lot, <laughs> especially about Windows Recall. <laughs> okay, thank you to our executive producers and our advisors, our Chicago Kicks people, our sea monsters, <laughs> and our death mode notes. And those are all our beautiful patrons on many different levels you can choose from on Patreon to support us. And thanks again to Dubsig and Nubbin for the resub. Have a great <laughs> rest of your week. Whatever operating system you may roam. Yeah, whatever works for you. We'll see you next or week. Or you might be dual booting. <laughs> Just stay away from Windows 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or not, you know, whatever. All right. Bye, everybody. See you next mm -hmm. week. <laughs>